VM World. Welcome to Mr. Dan Thomas. Everybody, show your love. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, so we want to talk about what we've done uh, at Geisinger Health and uh, where we're going using endpoint data. So Geisinger, oh, there we go. So Geisinger is serving 3 million residents over 45 counties in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Uh, we have a research facility, actually two, uh, one in Maryland. We actually just moved some people down there and we used uh, some data and I'll tell you how we did that to support that move. Uh, we have 30,000 employees, we're physician led, so 1,600 physicians, it's really important. I'm gonna talk about why our physicians are important to us when we come down to end user computing. We have 30,000 plus endpoints. We're moving to thin clients, VDI. We'll talk about that journey. And we have 10,000 non-persistent VDI, 1,000 persistent VDI, really big iOS footprint as well. There we go. So, I am the end user computing architect for Geisinger. Uh, it's something we just established in the last year. We're really trying to map the business capabilities to what we do in IT. So we wanted to take a new approach. We really wanted to be application driven. We're talking about a lot of virtualization today, you know, workspace, all those things. It's about delivering apps to users. So that's really foundational for us. It's identity driven. We really care about user experience. So we want to have our physicians and our nurses and everybody drive that experience. And we're virtual first. Whoa, this thing is really jumping. Let's go back. Dan, you can backtrack, I know, it's a little bit Yeah, it's a little, a little touchy. <laughs> but tune in, guys, next one. We have the newest version of Star Wars after this presentation. <laughs> you good? All right, there, there we go. go. Yeah, try it. Should have told you. <laughs> Wasn't in the memo. Sure. <laughs> so, what we want to treat user experience as a tool. So when we have our end user computing environment, I like to equate it, one of my, uh, my friends works in the OR, and our doctors are very particular about what type of tools they use. They have expectations, right? So they expect it to be sharp, they expect it to be new, sterile, the right tools and things that they need for that specific surgery. If they're an orthopedic surgeon, they expect a specific toolkit, but sometimes down to the vendor. So. What if we guaranteed that the user experience they're getting on the computers are the same thing? How are we doing that? We're trying to give a guarantee to our physicians that they get a fresh desktop through VDI. They're validating and monitoring the environments with these monitoring tools that we're using, and we're right-sizing those with the right apps for the right doctors. This thing is really touchy. So, I guess I'll just start with this slide and we'll, we'll consolidate it down a little bit. So what we did with our doctors is we looked at the care path. We looked at how are we going to roll out VDI and what were the problems that we had. Geisinger has 1,600 applications and we really didn't know who was using them. We had very poor uh, processes to deliver those applications. So the way we were doing it through group policy, we had it to computers and not users. So we didn't know who was actually using them. So we'd have thousands of installations of software that weren't even being used. So we really didn't know how to right size those VDI environments. So through using SysTrack and a professional service engagement that we started, we looked at the apps and we said, what do we need to get to these specific departments by these roles? So what we're doing in the future of IT here is really building an RBAC model on role-based access and giving people those applications that they need. So we really wanted to focus on device reduction. We had a lot of shared devices. 13,000 of them were shared computers. We didn't know who was using them and we didn't know what apps they were using. Yeah, maybe, maybe I just need to be a little closer. Got it. So we introduced end user experience monitoring in our VDI engagement. Uh, we got a taste of the data off of 3,000 of our 30,000 endpoints, and it honestly wasn't enough. We didn't have that holistic picture to really figure out who was using what applications and to guarantee that performance to the physicians. We had seven-year-old PCs out there. We knew the performance was in red, and we weren't giving them what we should give as a service model for IT. So we really wanted to rationalize our portfolio and prioritize the apps that we needed for VDI so that we knew we were delivering the right applications to like the 80% that we needed to get VDI adopted. It's kind of an 80-20 rule. So one of the other things we're doing is through ITSM and ITIL practices, we're integrating with ServiceNow to become a service provider. So again, we want to make sure that that service that we're providing is guaranteed. 
So these are some of the things that we started using. So this is a really interesting graphic. We trended this for our executive leadership. That's how many hours per week we have impacted by poor PC experience. So that number of hours can be equated to a dollar cost. And as you do initiatives like VDI, rolling out Windows 10, replacing your endpoints, you expect that number to go down. So then when that goes down, you can go back to your business leaders and say, we are guaranteeing these results and we just saved you time, which is money. And in healthcare, seconds save lives. So you really want that experience to be right there and you need to know it and you need to have the quantified data to do it. So it's really about showing back your EUC services and your infrastructure services and saying that these are being delivered and we're impacting you in a positive way. So our journey was really unique. Out of the 1,600 applications, we had 724 that we were pushing out as packages. This is some of the usage data. We actually only had 21 top apps that were used by 1,000 or more users. That's really not that many out of almost 800. So we actually started looking at the pie chart, and this was one of the things that was really surprising to us. Three or less uses. That's 255 applications that were used by three or less people. For us, we were pushing everything through app packaging. That's a four to five hundred dollar process per application to package something for three users or less. And then we found out that most of those applications weren't even being used at all. So what was happening is people were pacing upgrades, especially with Windows 10. They were just saying they're on the device, so let's get them packaged and then put them through the process. And it was unnecessary work. And we're saving thousands of dollars by not doing that work. So the other thing that's really cool is we started trending our power management. Uh, it was a uh, directive from some of our uh, IT leadership to look at power management capabilities. So we actually baselined that about two months ago. So you can see that we have an estimated value there of what we could do, and we're working on piloting that right now to see if we can reduce that number, and then we're gonna show that back to the business as well. So this is a look of our environment. As of a couple months ago, we have a lot of uh, performance that we're monitoring, we want to reduce that red, that poor performance, and then show it back to the business that we reduced it by those new initiatives like VDI, um, Windows 10, uh, device recycle. So the visualizers show us all those, those graphics and we can report that back. And we have holistic monitoring. So for our VDI environment, we're monitoring from the endpoint, the connection servers, our Windows 10 VMs, and our hosted apps. And we have a holistic view of that whole end user experience, right down to that specific person, whether it's running it green or not for them. So these are some of the cool things that we actually did, that these are our successes. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have some research facilities. Uh, we were on a call and we said, we need to pick them up in one town in Maryland and move them to a bigger city. And we started looking at all their endpoints and they had big, beefy workstations and were running workloads on them. And we sat down with their leadership and we said, why do they have these big devices when you guys are buying this more modern workspace that you want to be mobile and you're just going to bring laptops? And they said, we should be running that on the servers. Why are they running it on these PCs still? So we actually just ran the report, gave them the email addresses of all the users right out of our uh, SysTrack system and they emailed them and started moving them to mobile devices. So now when they move to the new building, we're not gonna have those big beefy workstations anymore. We didn't need them. So Windows 10 prioritization is huge for us. So what we were doing is looking at usage, not just where it was installed. Our troubleshooting has been improved greatly. Uh, we had a uh, bunch of slowness at our insurance buildings and uh, our uh, EUC director even dove in and started grouping all the PCs together. We just gathered all the 100 out of the 1,000 users at our insurance building and grouped them all together and started trending what's going on with the specific 100 users, not just the whole building and just taking shots in the dark at it. So we've had some really good successes. The other thing for our VDI environment, uh, we're starting to use app volumes. So we had a dashboard that was pre-canned that we brought in and we're looking at what is compatible or not. So when we have professional services and our VDI team working on it, we're not wasting time on apps that we know are maybe gonna cause us some problems. And we're just getting the easy ones right through and then getting those users onboarded. So uh, that's all I have. Uh, I appreciate uh, Everything done? Do you have any questions? Yeah, Dan, any questions we can feel? Dan Thomas, give a big round of applause, guys. Wow, awesome.